It was two years ago, March 16th, 2022, when Russell Wilson was mm. sent from Seattle to Denver mm -hmm. for a handful of picks and a handful of guys. What do we make now of the fact that nearly two years later, this relationship is done? The, the cash in his pocket now is a plenty. I hear some of the numbers that Rap Sheet says. He says 85 million in dead cap. He says mm -hmm. 39 million in salary. And it's like I'm still in shock. It's, you know, when you know something's coming, you yeah. expect it to happen. Still. But still, when it hits, it just hits a little bit Sticker different. shock. You, there you go. The numbers are big. Big. And <laughs> I look at this Russell Wilson, and he joins the Denver Broncos. And it obviously didn't go well in year one. They bring in Sean Payton. And year two and say, all right, he has an opportunity to fix him. Well, if it doesn't work out, they're most likely going to move on from Russell Wilson. But now that he's here, when you sign a contract like that, the thought within the locker room is that, all right, you look at your deal, you see exactly where the guaranteed money is. When as soon as that guaranteed money runs out, you're like, all right, at that point, I'm going to have to play well. I'm going to have to either take a pay cut or I'll be released. But you know for sure, whether it's those first two years, those first three years, when that money's fully guaranteed, when you know you're making $39 million in that year, all right, I'm safe. I'm going to be on the roster, and we're going to be able to figure it out. That was not the case for the Broncos. They were done with Russ so much that they're willing to eat all of this dead cap and the salary just to get him out of the building. And I look back at the tenure here, especially this past year where Sean Payton joins on. And you have all the different perspectives. You have different people saying, all right, Sean Payton sabotaged Russ. He never wanted him there. But then you have other people on the other hand just like, well, no, look at the moves that were made. They brought in linemen. Mm -hmm. They signed Samaj P. Ron. They brought, in, they brought in different people to help Russ on that offense. Blame whoever you want to blame. At the end of the day, it did not work out. And $39 million and 85 in dead cap, all of those different things transpiring, they're still willing to let Russ and invite him out the door and move on to the next era of quarterbacks. Interesting that Ian mentions offsets. So we see this with coaches a lot. When a coach gets like a five-year guaranteed mm -hmm. deal and is making $5 million a year, the next team that hires him, they don't have to pay him much because the other team already has to pay him. That's what Russ's situation is now. So he's getting that money. Every dollar he makes from a new team is a dollar that's less paid from the Broncos. So the new team has no incentive to pay him anything more than the veteran minimum. And mm -hmm. for Russ, he's getting it anyway. So this is one of those rare deals where we've got now a veteran quarterback who has a Super Bowl victory, who's got all the skins on the wall, who might still have good football left in him. Like, I don't, I don't have a, vi a vision that the tank is completely empty on Russ. I thought... He looked really good against Buffalo last year on a Monday night game. I thought he led his team in a cup. They beat the Chiefs. I mean, this is a guy that still had moments last year. Here, I was thinking about these guys who had the weird middle stop. Yeah. Like Kurt Warner on the Giants. Yep. Yeah. Carson Palmer on the Raiders. Totally. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, and then they go to that third spot and they're like, hey, look, I'm still me. I'm awesome. Mm. Even Favre, the weird year of the Jets, and then maybe totally. the Vikings. Vikings. That's yeah. what he needs. I, I think he's actually yeah. an attractive free agent okay. quarterback because. You're talking about Baker Mayfield might want $40 million. Mm -hmm. You're talking Daniel Jones last year made $40 million from the Giant. Russell Wilson could play for $4 million, and I don't know if the production from Baker Mayfield is tenfold over what Russell is. So you're getting a 30-something-year-old Russell Wilson who's got a chip on his shoulder, who is already paid by somebody else. I think... The, the, it could be an attractive piece to a team because what he brings when he's playing best. Of course, you say the personality and all that he brings. I, I don't think anyone at the Broncos, even including Russell, uh, Sean Payton, would say he's a bad guy. It was just didn't fit the offense, yeah. didn't fit what they were doing, and Payton inherited him. So I, I, I think this is a tremendous contract that he took on from Denver. It's one of the worst trades of all time when you look back on it. It is one of the most hazardous contract liabilities that an old team has on a player that's not playing for him. But for Russell Wilson, like, now he becomes kind of an attractive piece mm. for a team that's looking for a veteran quarterback. That's a very positive spin. I respect yeah. that. Yeah. I, I'm just so <laughs> relieved this is over. It's hard to watch. It yeah. was hard to watch. Yeah. It was like a bad celebrity marriage. And honestly, like, Broncos, great franchise. Russell Wilson, great player. Just, it, no. Mm -hmm. it, it was, like... Kim K and, and Chris Humphreys, like mm. that one. Like, what, what are we? That's exactly where my 72 what days. 72 here? days that was. That's what it felt like. And also, like, you know, most expensive divorce. Like, my God. I mean, what did Melinda Gates get? It was, I mean, it was, it was in the football terms, I think it was pretty close. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and listen, I respect what the Broncos did, I respect their intentions. Mm -hmm. They're like, we're the Broncos. We matter. We're one of the most important franchises. We win Super Bowls here. We've got them. Let's go out and give our fans a really big superstar quarterback, and let's pay top dollar. It's what a lot of fan bases want their teams to do. They never will. They took It just didn't work. Mm -hmm. It was just terrible. And, Peter, like, it's the worst trade in NFL history.
it is the number one. And so, like, take your medicine, and then we'll move on. But, like, let's just recap, mm. okay? To get Russell Wilson, the Broncos sent two ones, two twos, a five, and young promising players. They paid him $120 plus million dollars. And then it's also, there's this next year where they also traded for Peyton, and they traded a one and a two for Peyton, yep. and they're rewarded in year one with Russell Wilson's worst year of his career. Not only that, derision, mockery, like, it was just really bad. I respect their intentions. It's terrible. It's over. I'm glad it's over. I don't know where they go next. I don't care. It's the worst trade in NFL history. When mm. you start saying, I don't know, Herschel Walker might have been, like, yep. we're already into the unknown. They also mm. fired a coach 14 weeks into the season. True. Right. So, yeah. listen, first it's all very coach. bad. Yeah. So, we're going to move on. They're going to move on. I'm glad it's over. I'm relieved it's over. It was, it was really bad. And now we're going to a new day. For, for all parties involved. Like, it's not just a new day for the Broncos. Like, I think for Russ, too. Yeah. I'm really curious. Because I think... I don't want to say his character took a hit in the two years, but the way he was perceived by people who watch football and what they thought they knew of him in Seattle, I think that took a hit for him over the last two years. The, the weird parking spot thing, the office in the building, all those strange reports in his first year that came out, I think was just people were very judgmental of him, and now he's trying to put a positive spin on it, very thankful to Broncos country in his time there, how kind they were to his family, whatnot. That's all well and good. The football wasn't good, and I oftentimes yeah. look at lists like this that we're going to show and say, what's the anomaly here? What stands out? When you look at over the last two years and quarterbacks that haven't fared well, this is not a shot on those three names, but you look at the other three names, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Derek Carr, they were all in subpar systems. The way the, the teams that they were on, Mac Jones struggled. Right. Russell Wilson does not belong on that list. When you consider a two-year tenure, wherever Russell Wilson was, was playing, he is the kind of quarterback that shouldn't be on a list like this, yet here he is. So we all know what we're watching unfold with the Chicago Bears and Justin Fields. The fact that he has one less loss than that stretch for the Bears says a lot about how things fare for Russell Wilson. This isn't great either. It's the football is curious. Whatever he has left in the tank, my next question is, how does this fit in the future system that you are going to apply him to? See, I look at that. 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. That's good. I thought I thought he was all right last year. Last year's, last year's fine. Yeah. Last year's first fine. Year I, I feel, so if it's, but maybe that's a Sean Payton thing. Well, and it seems I, and it seems like you look at it, and then a lot of people are like, all right, you look at his numbers, and his numbers looked fine. To your point, put, those, full, put that full screen up again because I, I think that second. And a lot of people oh. look at it and say, well, when you look at them offensively, they just weren't doing enough. They were scoring a points to keep it close, but at the same time, they weren't making any of those plays to go out and win football games. Mm -hmm. To your point, though. There was a lot going on. Remember, this is a team that gave up 70 points in a game early on yeah. when they were scoring enough points offensively to win some games. So it just felt like it never meshed at the right time as in an organization in its entirety. Um, it was more than the stats. Yes. yes. Peyton thing. Peyton's like, this is not my guy. I don't want to go forward. I'm paraphrasing, of course. They lost to the Patriots, like a really bad Patriots team, and that was the last time mm -hmm. he ever played. Mm -hmm. the, we, the stats look fine. It wasn't about the stats. They benched him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Him exactly. They benched Russell Wilson, and he yeah. was making that money. I, I also, like, I look back at that, at that time, you were coming off Tom Brady coming to Tampa and getting them the Super Bowl. Yes. Matt Stafford going to the Rams, getting uh. them the Super Bowl. I don't think any of us at the table were knocking the trade at the time. And even when the contract came in, you're like, well, it's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. That's just what yeah. it is. Yeah. And now you look at it, and it's the most, like, you know, erroneous decision ever made. At the time, I don't think any of us were knocking it. What's crazy is that in that yeah. time, new ownership, new head coach, Everything around that team has changed, and now Russell's gone. Too. I think yeah. the only people who maybe didn't like the trade, there were some former Seahawks in the media who didn't like it. Yeah. They always have a lot of takes on Russ. A lot. Right. That's a long, you know. Yeah. yeah, definitely. They always say that. And I look back, too, when Hackett first took the Broncos job. Remember, it was Aaron Rodgers was going to leave Green Bay and mm -hmm. go to Denver. So it was almost like, mm -hmm. was Russ kind of the second option? Well, we missed on Rodgers. We brought Hackett here. We got to go and shoot for something. But it obviously did not. Okay, so considering the numbers, even though there was some improvement in terms of production in the second year, do you deem this with the trade, the money, everything? Is this an abject failure? No doubt about it. I remember we did two-point conversing last summer. This was after year one of the experience. <laughs> yeah. And we said, like, is this the worst trade? And you just brought up the Herschel Walker, and you were kind of going through comps <laughs> trying to figure out you a way that up, to give it a chance. And it was just like, well, it's only year one. Like, let's give it to year two, and let's I see what happens. That's without the money. That's without the There's money. That's money. without the trade for Sean Payton. That's without yeah. firing Nathaniel Hackett, a coach that you had to pay as well. So without a shadow of a doubt, it's an absolute 
absolute failure. This is a team that didn't make the playoffs. There was only thing that was talked about was Russ saying Bron Broncos country, let's ride. That was the most thing yeah. that was talked about since he joined there. There was nothing positive, I think, that came from you the You were trade. coming off a, a, a run, and Peyton referenced it at the combine. We are talking about the meme, but, like, you had Brett Rippon. Yeah. You had, uh, you know, obviously, you go back to Paxton Lynch, and you had Joe Flacco starting games, and you tried Teddy Bridgewater. Like, they were so hungry for a star. Simeon. It, Trevor Simeon, Simeon that it just, it, it was like, it was like, okay, finally, we got a guy. Yeah, it just know, didn't work know, out. But yes, I mean, monster failure. But it's just two years, and now you're going to see if you can win despite the salary cap hazards. We're straight in NFL history, but I'm going to spin positive. Okay. There, is, there, is, there is one positive. If, if they were about to make it, like, before they did the two years, and someone said to him, like, game show style, I'm not going to tell you how the rest of it goes, but I will tell you that Russ is going to beat the Chiefs, He's going to throw three touchdown passes against the Chiefs. He's going to hit Judy. He's going to hit Cortland. And we're going to end this streak of you guys losing to the Chiefs. And it's not some weird thing where Mahomes is out. Like, he beats Mahomes and Reed. Do you want it? And they're going to be like, well, how's the rest of it going? I'm not going to tell you, but you <laughs> did beat the Chiefs. This was a great day for Russell Wilson and the Broncos. It was a great day. There weren't a lot of them. When we look back on this era, let's just remember that the Chiefs owned them. Mahomes had never lost to the Broncos. He went in, he threw three touchdowns, they beat him, they beat him in front of their home fans, and then it all went to hell in a handbasket after that. But it was not a total failure. They brought him in, paid him a quarter billion dollars or something, and he ended the streak, and now he moves on. So he did do something. And he beat Josh Allen. He beat Mahomes and Allen last year. So he yeah. finally stops the streak. Like, there yeah. were games. There were games. There were games. The I'm trying to spin positive. No, stop he the ended streak. the streak. Whoever takes it over for Denver now, doesn't have to be like, you know, they haven't beaten the Chiefs never because Russ took care of that. Yeah. Huh? So give Russ his credit. Come so on. So you're giving the Broncos a morale win for that one. Yep. Do you think it's more meaningful the fact that the Chiefs went on to win a Super Bowl that season? Sure. What if it was a terrible season uh, yeah. for the Chiefs? Okay, great. They don't have terrible seasons. No, they don't. So they beat Mahomes. This was none of this Blaine Gabbert was in. No, no, they beat Mahomes. They can never take that away from them. They just had to pay a lot of money to do it. We should